Okay, welcome back. This lesson covers data store clusters and storage DRS. What is storage DRS? What are data store clusters? Basically, our goal here is to explain to you how to create something called a data store cluster, how to configure vSphere storage DRS, and then you should be able to explain how storage IO control and vSphere storage DRS complement each other. So what does this all entail, right? We just covered storage IO control, which covers how to balance IO when you have multiple ESX servers trying to access the same data store. Well, what if you have multiple data stores that you'd like to run together as a collective group, basically an aggregate, really essentially of all the different data stores for a certain type of workload characteristic? What do we mean by that? Well, essentially, if you were to take a group of data stores have them work as a sort of a logical unit. Now this isn't RAID, it's not even RAIN, right? Not a redundant array of independent nodes. It's basically an aggregate of data stores. Now in our example here, we have four data stores that are 500 gigabytes each, making, making the entire data store cluster two terabytes of storage. They're not required to be all the same size. This is not this kind of configuration where we're, where we're going to stripe across all those different data stores. No, that's not what we're doing here. It's basically just ensuring that if you have a collection of data stores, we're trying to create an environment that is far more automated when you have traditional storage like VMFS and NFS, so that the administrators don't have to keep track of which data stores are more full than other data stores. We want to make sure that you know certain data stores aren't being outperformed by other data stores. If these are all been configured in a similar way, right? In fact, that's what you should do when you build a data store cluster. You should have a collection of LUNs. You can have up to 64 of them, by the way. 64 LUNs can be all grouped together to essentially represent a common storage IO characteristic, right? So they're basically going to be the same RAID, right? Same performance, same levels of availability. You want to make sure that all these different data stores that are in this cluster, if a VM were to be having its files move from one data store to the other data store, that it's imperceivable, right? There's no way for an application or a user to know that the performance is any different or the level of availability is any different. The data stores should be interchangeable. But what we're getting out of this is that means the administration doesn't have to make sure that each individual data store isn't getting at its near, near full capacity because that's really what the job of storage DRS is. If you're familiar with the DRS service that runs on ESX servers, that's where you group together a collection of ESXi hosts where then DRS automates vMotion. Well, what does storage DRS do? Well, storage DRS basically groups together a bunch of data stores into a data store cluster and it'll automate storage vMotion. And it will do that as data stores, data stores are getting near full what will happen is storage DRS will then use storage vMotion or even just a storage migration if the VM was off because it the VM doesn't have to be on or off to be managed by storage DRS. If the data stores are getting near full, it'll start migrating the files of the VMs to other data stores that are less full, creating balance in storage utilization. So storage DRS's primary goal is to do that. Make sure every data store is not at its absolute full capacity, right? We're basically making sure all the data stores are going to be filled up to a certain threshold. It's 80% by default, but it's going to make sure that no one single data store, is, data store is going to be full, and then all the other data stores are less full. Now, another feature that is part of storage DRS, but it's not always enabled, is the ability to perform monitoring on IO latency, where in the case of a data store starting to appear to have some storage latencies, it can then storage DRS can determine, well, maybe if it moves one or more virtual machines to another data store, it can lower the potential latency on one data store to create again, more balance in terms of disk latency. So it's a utilization and latency monitoring service, this storage DRS, but it's actually only doing the, the utilization or the capacity balancing as a required feature. The IO latency feature is actually optional. In fact, when you turn on the IO latency, monitoring feature of storage DRS, that in itself will turn on storage IO control on each of the different data stores so that storage DRS can use the metrics that were basically generated by having storage IO control enabled to then be used in the calculations on how it should decide when to move virtual machines from one data store to the next. So the requirements for storage DRS, right? First of all, the data stores and the hosts that are associated with the data store cluster, you need to have some minimum requirements. For instance, the data store clusters must contain similar or interchangeable data stores, which means they should all be VMFS or they should all be NFS. 
right? So all data stores in a cluster must be in the same format. vSAN and virtual volumes are not part of this, right? So this is again, storage DRS is just for VMFS and NFS types of data stores. Things you have to watch out for. If you have replicated data stores, don't combine them in a non, with non-replicated data stores in the same data store cluster. That would be bad if it's automating storage remotion where the VMs were on one data store that was being replicated and then storage DRS moves things over to another data store that wasn't being replicated, that would be a problem. Now, if you have storage that supports VASA, that's actually something that can be advertised to storage DRS about the replication state of the files that are in the different volumes. And if you wanted to create replication groups, it can actually determine when and where to move VMs so that it doesn't move a VM from one replication group to another replication group on some incorrect LUN. Also, data stores shared across multiple data centers cannot be included in a data store cluster, right? So they should all be in the same data center and data stores with hardware acceleration enabled should not be included in the same data store cluster with data stores that have not had hardware acceleration enabled. Remember, that's VAAI. So you need to have every one of your data stores all VAAI enabled or all of them not. Don't mix that up because again, it's trying to create balance, especially if you're doing IO latency monitoring, that would be problematic in determining what's the best location for a VM to get migrated to if some data stores have hardware acceleration and others do not. Now, in the process of creating a data store cluster, what we do is you choose in the cluster, which is the associated host or host cluster. Now, you have some choices. You can actually create a data store cluster and associate one host cluster to it. You can have one host cluster be associated with multiple data store clusters. This is good where if you might have one data store cluster that is your gold cluster, and then you have another data store cluster that's your silver storage, so that you can have one host cluster that is able to have VMs in either one of the different types of storage, because that's a pretty common way to use storage clusters is to have you know, one storage cluster made up of one storage tier and the other storage cluster to, made up, to be made up of a different storage tier. And then of course you might have more than one host cluster, one for finance, one for engineering, and they both may need to use gold storage and silver storage. So you can have a many to many mapping in as it relates from host clusters to data store clusters. So remember, the host clusters are, are automating vMotion. The data store clusters would be automating storage vMotion. So what are the key functions here? Storage DRS, just like host DRS, has this level of automation. It will provide initial placement when you power on, not when you power on, when you create a VM, right? When you create a VM, it will place the VM files in the data store cluster for you. So the admin doesn't have to choose the data store any longer. We just choose the data store cluster and the cluster chooses the data store within the cluster based on current capacity and um, IO latency conditions. It'll use storage remotion to migrate your VMs based on current capacity usage as well as IO latency if you've got that service enabled. You can set up affinity, anti-affinity rules to govern how virtual disks are gonna get placed. So if a VM has a boot drive and a data drive, they don't have to be in the same data store. You can create a rule that sets that up. Same goes with building an anti-affinity rule across VMs. Maybe I wanna make sure two VMs are never on the same data store. So just like DRS, these placement rules will always take precedence. So you wanna be very careful when creating these different rules. You wanna you know, give storage DRS the, the best opportunity to be able to migrate files around the data store. If you've got all these rules that define how the VM should be associated with each other, it'll always do those first. And then whatever resources has left will be where it can automate the storage remotion and so on. And storage DRS can be set up to work in either manual mode or in fully automated mode, all right? So unlike DRS, which we recommend running fully automated pretty much all the time, there are cases when storage DRS would be set in manual mode. You can also put your data stores in what's called maintenance mode where then stores DRS would then automate the evacuation of your VM files, regardless if the VMs are on or off, just evacuate all the VM files off that data store so you can perform some maintenance. So this initial displacement, again, this is when you create a VM, not when you power it on, that's, that's a host placement decision, but when you create a VM, the files have to be created regardless if the VM is on or on or off, right? So when you create a VM, you basically aim the wizard that you're using to create the VM, whether you're creating a VM from scratch or you're cloning a VM or you're deploying a VM from a template, you're gonna choose where the VMs to be placed. You choose the cluster and then the cluster will choose the data store for us. 
And by default, all the VM files are placed in the same data store as a local affinity setting. So a VM who has boot drives and data drive, they're all going to be in the same data store within the data store cluster, unless you specify otherwise with an anti-affinity rule. So these affinity rules can be defined in a VM and also across VMs. The default is our example on the left. Intra-VM VM decay affinity rule, where all the virtual disks of the VMs are always contained within the same data store. If, on the other hand, you'd like to create a VM intra-VM VM decay anti-affinity rule, this will separate the boot drive and the data drive from a VM so that the two VM files are actually going to be on different data stores. You can also just create VM anti-affinity rules, or maybe you have VMs that are maybe replicas to each other. So it wouldn't make sense they're on the same data store. You can create a rule that just says, make sure these VMs are always on different data stores. You don't care which data store necessarily, just as long as they're on different data stores. So when it comes time for storage duress to make a decision, right? When does it decide to do a storage vMotion? Well, there's again, two factors that will cause storage duress to do a migration. One would be that the IOPS limit has basically, or the IOPS latency threshold has been exceeded. And the other case is when the actual storage utilization has exceeded. Now, among those two things that it monitors for, the utilization threshold is something it checks for all the time. When a data store hits 80%, it's gonna look for other data stores that are less full. The IO, the IO latency threshold is something that you have if you've enabled that part of storage DRS, right? That's not something that necessarily is gonna be on all the time. That's actually interesting. That's checked every eight hours by default, which is an adjustable chip period. The whole point of the latency threshold is it's trying to look at a long-term historical usage and look at potential latency issues, mostly to avoid bottlenecks before they occur. So it's actually a relatively low latency number. It's like 15 milliseconds. So, you know, in a lot of cases, that's not a lot of stores latency. So, and it has to have had averaged that over eight hours. So it's looking at historical numbers here, not like trying to deal with the bottleneck that's happening in real time. That's actually what storage IO control does. Storage IO control deals with the unavoidable bottlenecks, creates a equalized access for all the VMs on the same host and all the VMs on the same data store, I mean, but storage DRS is looking at long-term potential latency issues and will use storage remotion to essentially avoid those bottlenecks before they occur. And then finally, one other important thing here before we take a break, the data store correlation detector. If you remember, I mentioned something with the storage IO control lesson, talking about how storage IO control is great, but if you've got a whole collection of data stores that are backed by the same storage pool, storage IO control may not always be able to solve those kinds of issues, where storage DRS can pay attention to all the different data stores that are in the cluster and discover which data stores that are backed by common storage pools. So say, for instance, you've got 10 data stores in a cluster, five data stores are backed by one storage pool, the other data stores are backed by a different storage pool, storage DRS will actually recognize that. And if it determines it needs to do a VM migration to another data store, it will probably avoid moving the VM from one data store to another data store all in the same storage pool, because that may not actually give the VM any real benefit. It's gonna move the VM to another data store that is hosted by a different storage pool. So it always does this analysis, this data store correlation detector, detecting by measuring individual data store performance and measuring combined data store performance to determine which data stores that are actually correlated by the common sets of storage pools. So if you've got a data store cluster that's backed by more than one storage pool, this is actually where it can actually be pretty intelligent and move virtual machines based on their correlation. So that's a quick look at this storage IO control. We'll take a quick break and we'll come back and take a look at the configuration. So we'll see you in a few minutes.